Before adding quail to our homestead, there were a lot of things that I thought I knew, or honestly, I just didn't even think to think about before getting them. I did a little bit of research and ended up purchasing them. We have a large acreage, around 10 acres of just farm area here that we can use and we can utilize. And our neighbors are pretty far set back from us, so I wasn't too worried. But today I'm gonna go over the seven things I wish I knew. And the first one being that I thought but all quail laid in the first six to eight weeks of their life. They would just start laying eggs. This is just what I researched and I kind of just assumed that all quail were in this six to eight weeks and that is not true. Similar to chickens, there are a lot of different breeds of quail and each breed has their own set of timing from the incubation periods all the way to the time period that it's gonna take them to start laying their first egg and even how long Long they're going to lay eggs, the color of their eggs, the style of their eggs. So we're going to dive into that. So Coternic quail will start to lay eggs at around six to eight weeks. They're probably the fastest turnaround time in all of the quail breeds and they're one of the most popular quail to raise. We have them at our homestead but we didn't start with raising Coternic quail. We actually started with Bob White quail and they're gonna take more like 18 to 20 to even 22 weeks to start laying eggs, which is obviously a lot longer of a time. And the reason that we had originally gotten Bob White Quail is because we live in the northeast of the US and we wanted to get a quail that was more native to this area. We kind of decided that we wanted to take them, breed them and kind of set them loose. And we thought, okay, in the meantime, we will get eggs from them. And the incubation period was a lot longer. Raising them to an age where they actually could start laying eggs was a lot longer. And overall, the process was just a lot longer. And then as we did research, we learned about Coternic quail, which do do things a lot faster. And they're still a very hardy breed. We can keep them in the outdoors. They're really good with the cold, with the heat. As long as they have safety from the outside environments like rain, sleet, snow, then they're going to be a pretty good easy bird regardless of the climate that you're in. But this isn't the only two types of quail. There are also a few others and some even take six months to start laying their own eggs. That's right. The mountain quail actually takes six months to start laying eggs where they're at a mature stage that they're going to be egg laying. So definitely do your research and figure out the exact breed that's gonna fit your homestead, your climate, and your needs before you actually go ahead and purchase quail. As we talk about eggs and production, another crazy thing that I learned is that quail are only going to produce a large amount of eggs for the first two years, which is honestly not that long. If you think about chickens, they're laying eggs from anywhere from three to five years in a pretty large production amounts. And then they'll start to taper off until they're around seven years of age, laying a lot less, but a lot bigger of an egg, where quail are really only getting good size and a good amount of eggs for the first two years, which is honestly not that long. And the type of egg is honestly significantly different than a chicken egg. A chicken egg is obviously much larger because they are much larger of a bird, whereas a quail egg, you're going to have more of a smaller egg and you're going to need around three quail eggs to equal out one chicken egg in like nutrition and calories. If you were just making an omelet, that's kind of the ratio that we think of. And the exterior of the egg is really, really different. So a chicken egg, you can kind of on the side of your glass and it will break and very easily you can crack the egg. Whereas a quail egg, you might need an additional apparatus. We have quail egg cutters. You can also use a serrated knife to actually cut the side of the egg because the exterior shell is a lot tougher than that of a chicken egg. It doesn't make that significant of a difference, but the eggs are just really different. And your first time cracking it, you're gonna be like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this so wrong? Because it is just really strange the first time you do it. Another thing that's really great about quail is you can actually use them for not only a great egg source, but also a great meat source. And they taste 
very delicious. We honestly like to think of them as just a baby chicken because when you actually start to harvest them and clean them all up, they literally look like a baby chicken. And because they are such a nutritious animal, their meat is packed with nutrients, they also can be really satiating. So honestly, me and my husband Chris can each have one to two quail each, like our entire meal, some veggies on the side, and we're really, really full after. Whereas you might need a larger amount of actual chicken meat to get you to the same amount of full feeling. So they're a really great bird if you are looking for an animal to actually raise and harvest and get meat at your homestead for a low cost, low entry fee to get in, and just a lot of great tasty food. You can follow a lot of the same recipes that you would with a chicken, except for you're just doing most of those bone-in type recipes. We have some really great Asian style recipes, which I can definitely link below some of my favorites that we've tried, and they're really quite delicious and cook up pretty fast. If you're thinking about adding quail to your homestead, one of the most important factors is actually thinking about how you're going to be sourcing these quails. And one thing that was really interesting when we started to think about adding quail to our homestead, and even throughout my time raising quail, we found really interesting is most of the time you do need to purchase quail as a fertilized egg and incubate them on your own. We have a lot of videos about incubating quail. They're pretty easy to incubate and you're usually going to get around 50 to 70 percent incubation rates which is really good and if you have both males and females in your flock you can also incubate your own which we do a lot of here as well to just kind of reinvigorate and keep your stock up so you don't always have to be buying a new quail i found it really hard to actually buy quail the baby quails, so similar to like baby chicks that you would purchase from a hatchery or from tractor supplier or any mill type store, they don't usually sell baby quail. And that's because they really are a lot more fragile than a baby chick, which is <laughs> crazily a really tough animal. They can go without eating for the first couple of days and being shipped across the country or different states which is just wild whereas a baby quail can't really do the same so i'd suggest actually getting fertilized eggs which we found getting them through different types of hatcheries craigslist facebook marketplace or etsy has been really successful for us a lot of our fertilized eggs that we've purchased were honestly from etsy and i really like that because you're supporting local small farms but you can also look on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Some people will sell adult quails as well because they don't lay for that long. You definitely want to look into the age and the genders that you're getting, you're given, as well as just the overall health of the bird because they might not lay for that much longer depending on the age that you're getting them at. And I found that they're a lot more expensive. Usually getting quail eggs, you can get a pack of quail eggs for around five to ten dollars. I'm not sure what it is. We got them a couple of years ago so I don't know what the going rate is right now but they're pretty affordable for like a 12 or 24 or 48 eggs whereas usually if you're gonna buy per quail they're more like five to ten dollars per adult quail and you really don't know the age unless someone is telling you the age so something to really think about as you're purchasing your own quail and if you actually start to think about purchasing your own quail, there are a few things that you want to think about when adding them to your backyard. And the first one, this isn't really that crazy, but they are really messy eaters, which means that they're going to waste a lot of food. So when you are starting to set up your quail coop or your quail home, really think about the type of food apparatus that you're going to be using because they're gonna be so messy, it's gonna go flying everywhere. So think about where you're gonna set it up. What we really like is we actually have our quail, they're like right here where my finger is. They are floating above our chicken coop. So all of the feed is in something that's more protected for them to eat out of. And then any food that does fly out, our chickens can just get the scraps below. So not all of it is getting completely wasted. Whereas previously we had it in a setup where it would just like fly out onto the ground. Nobody ended up eating it. It would just kind of 
get moldy or gross, mice would come. So this is actually something that works really well for us to make sure that we aren't wasting as much feed. When you're adding them to your backyard, and quail are actually known to be more patio type birds because they are really small and they don't make that much of noises, but they do make noises. So the female quail are gonna be honestly pretty quiet, but the male quail are going to make more of a crowing noise. And let's cue a video right now. That is the noise of the quail. So honestly, not too bad. And this noise is mostly going to be because of breeding seasons. And you can choose to do different things in your coop setup to help lower this. But what's really nice is it is matching to a lot of the natural bird sounds, which you might hear in the background right now. <laughs> and because of this, a lot of neighbors aren't going to find that they're too much of a nuisance as compared to the guinea fowl and chicken that you might be hearing in the background of this video, which are much louder and not as common as a songbird type animal. So you can't get away with having them as close to neighbors. These are just seven of the things that I've learned through raising quail, but Comment down below what you've learned. If you've stayed throughout this entire video, then comment down a picture of a bird emoji in the comments. And I'd love to see you guys again next time. So definitely hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.